25 minutes. Is that okay? That would take us to about 20 past. Is that right? 20 past, perfect. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for turning up this morning. That's amazing. 9.50. I thought nobody's going to And the sun is not shining, so yeah, thank you very much. Wonderful. Um, I would like to read you a little story that you might have heard before, you might not have. It's, it's got to do something with my life, and that's why I chose it this morning. So please forgive me if I'm reading off, otherwise I don't have a concept. That's the only one. Um, so, uh, has, anyone, has anybody heard about Solomon's wise judgment? Mm. You have. Mm. Who hasn't? A few. Oh, that's good. Are you happy to hear it again? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> now, two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. And one woman said, Oh, my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house. And I gave birth while she was in the house. Then, that, then it happened, the third day after I had given birth, that this woman also gave birth. And we were together. No one was with us in the house, except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maid servant slept, and laid him in her bosom, and laid her dead, in, her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was, dead. But when I had examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son, whom I had born. Then the other woman said, No, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, No, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. And the king said, The one says, This is my son who lives, and your son is the dead one. And the other says, No, but your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. Then the king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king, and the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion for her son, and she said, Oh my lord, give the living child, but by no means kill him. But the other said, Let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him. She is the mother. So, why have I read this story to you? <clears throat> because I was in a bit of a similar situation with one of my exes, who is the father of my first child. And from day one, he fought for this child to be his and not mine. Um, at one point, <clears throat> when she was about five years old, I let her go. And I let her go to live with her dad. And eventually, I even had to give up custody. So I lost about seven years of her life, her young life, um, and don't know, and was a part of her life during that time. So um, I felt I was the one who gave up my child for love. And you might judge me for that, but I, I think it was the right thing to do. <clears throat> uh, she wasn't being um, torn apart anymore, um, for one had given up and let her go um, to live with her father. And. Um, it took about seven years to, for her to reconnect with me um, when she was in puberty and starting to think, starting to question her dad's behaviors and, and his decisions. And I, I then came back. I, I always kept in contact with her. I was um, sending her birthday letters and cards. Um, I was not allowed to see her. I wasn't allowed to know how she was. I dared to go into school to her, to see her. Um, and, and I didn't do that often because the first time I did that she was very nervous, she didn't know how to react, she didn't know what to say, she was very shy and, and um, didn't kind of know how to deal with the situation, she was simply too young. 
So that was the beginning point for me to, um, of course, when, when I had let her go and when I had to give up custody, that, that was the point for me in my life. I was just, uh, just under 30 when I started thinking, um, so why is this happening to me? Why has that happened to me? And the reason I found in work a work called the Family Constellations. Has anybody heard of them, Family Constellations? Two? Yeah. That's kind of um, what I expected. So <laughs> I'm glad I can spread the word a little bit about this amazing um, form of help that is about for people who don't know how to come to terms with family situations, with difficult relationships, with trauma that has happened in the family, and to understand how the, the underlying dynamics work in families. So um, when I did my first constellation, um, my, my main issue that was coming up uh, at the time, of course, I, I did miss my daughter, and I didn't know what, what was happening, but my daughter wasn't the burning issue of the day on the, at the time. Uh, the burning issue was that I didn't feel supported and seen by my own mother. So um, I, I, um, constellations work with people, with, um, with other people in the room. So you have a setup, a group setup, and um, you have a, a so-called audience and you have a so-called issue holder. That was me at that point. And you have a facilitator. The facilitator will ask you what you would like, what that, what you would like um, the outcome to be, and the um, and the the audience will be available hugely um, as representatives for your family members. So um, when I had formulated my issue, which was as I said, um, I don't see, I don't feel seen by my own mother. Um, she asked me, the facilitator asked me to place my mother in the room somewhere on, we call it stage, so there's an audience and there's a stage or there's a circle and the stage is in the middle, it doesn't really matter. I place my mother, so, so search for somebody in the room to place, my, to replace, sorry, to represent my mother and um, somebody in the room to, re to represent myself. So even I had a representative standing in, in the circle. Um, and uh, also for my father. So we had three people standing there and, and the, my representative was standing in front of my parents looking at them. And um, my mother, my representative for my mother was looking over my head, over my representative's head and um, into nowhere. And, and my representative was looking like hopeful to her mother, and but wasn't seen. So, um, as the facilitator asked about uh, trauma that happened in the family, um, it came. Well, I had to sort of tell her that um, the twin sister of my mother was was born alive but died after birth, and uh, so she brought that dead sibling into the constellation represented by another woman and put that representative next to my mother and put my father aside because um, that was more of a burning issue at the time. So um, when that sister of my mother's appeared, who was of course my aunt, um, uh, my representative started um, looking onto that person and was comple completely fixated with that person that she never seen, never heard, only had been talked about, and it's a big mystery around um, what happened, why that child died. And um, so at that point, of course, my <coughs> the representative for my mother um, was getting a bit curious who that person is, and all of a sudden they made a connection, and it was a heartwarming, um, very, um, emotionally felt connection. They, uh, they started seeing each other, they started hugging each other. People who had never met, who had never known anything about it, and they were in, in absolute um, union um, and recognizing each other. And uh, uh, so that was one of the things that happened. And then there was another thing that happened for my mother in her life. She, um, she lost her mother when she was only 13 years young. 
um, due to cancer. And uh, so um, we brought the mother into the constellation as well as an another representative. And my mother saw her mother and it was the same situation really. It was, oh my God, I missed you so much. And there was eventually the big hug and the, and the reunion that had not happened for such a long time. Uh, so my mother basically, um, her soul was had never been healed from, from these extraordinary traumas that she experienced. First as a baby, even though she wasn't of course any conscious about it, but there's something in us that knows and there's something in us, you know, when, when you've been in the womb with your sibling um, for nine months, then there is a feeling of there is somebody else, and that somebody else wasn't there anymore, and she carried that always with her. So my mother basically turned out to be quite a lost soul, somebody who wasn't quite here in life. And my father turned out to be the person that she leaned on, that helped her living, basically. When he t when he stepped away, she would she would kind of um, not not be able to stand anymore. Um, so that all these things that I saw made it very clear to me that my mother was basically not available. She was physically and mentally not really available at all. So no wonder she didn't see me ever. Um, but once all these processes had been healed there and then in the room with representatives, um, I was allowed to step into the place myself and my representative was allowed to sit down and I could look at my mother and my mother, um, well the representative of course, but what you see is your, is your pa you see the parent, <laughs> you can't help it. And, um, that, and my mother looked at me and that of course was then for me a, a very emotional moment when I thought, oh my God, th that's what it's like when your mother sees you. And, uh, and again, um, I, I, there, there are little things that we do in constellations, little sentences. It's mostly a non-verbal process, but it, but it is, it's very emotional and there are little sentences that you can say that kind of heal the soul. Like a sentence like, I am your child and you are my mother and you will always be my mother. Things, things like that that are very obvious and very simple, but they, they just point out the very truth of the matter. And also, <clears throat> what, it, what happened for me was I found my place. I, I was struggling in life as well. I, I didn't know who I was because I had no guidance, especially no female guidance in my life. There, there was a mother who cared for me, yes, but, um, but she didn't give me any emotional, um, she did, didn't fulfill my emotional needs at all. So, um, the process, well, by that time I was nearly 30 when I experienced that, but it, it initiated a healing process inside of me that was <coughs> absolutely life-changing. Um, for the first time ever, I looked at my mother differently, and that made the big change between me and her. And it has been going on since. Um, it's now 20 years later, and, and I've, I've only heard, recently heard my mother say to me, I wish you all the best because of, of my new ventures. I've become self-employed just recently and she was never into the stuff I do. She was not into constellations. She was not <coughs> into the Nara Nunu stuff that I'm into, the spiritual <coughs> stuff. <laughs> she, she doesn't kind of uh, approve of these things, but, and, but it was a, from, from the point of that constellation up to 20 years later now, our relationship has constantly improved. And what really <coughs> changed it was my attitude, her, my awareness of things that had happened in her life and the way I looked at her and the way I accepted that she <coughs> was a, uh, she had been a child that had experienced great sense of loss and not had, and hadn't heard, hadn't had her parents available to her either. And that, of course, um, yeah, so my next step was um, to understand why my daughter, why I had lost my daughter. I mean, part of it we knew already. If I wasn't available either, because I had all these unfulfilled needs um, through lack of, like even for my parents. 
so um, I wasn't very much a grown up in the world mother that she could count on. She she couldn't. Um, <laughs> hence, I was in you know in a relationship with an abusive man <laughs> who I had a child with. So. Um, yeah, so I started understanding all these things and it made a big difference in my life. I kind of started taking charge of my own emotions, of things, how I see the world and how I go into the world. And the next step, when I looked at, my, at the issue with my daughter, um, it was very, very clear that she had to be with him. So when I placed him and my daughter and myself it was very clear that she she immediately um, she stood by him, and she literally stood by him. She stood by him because in the in the constellation it became very clear that she was there for him. She was replacing something for him that wasn't there, and that I can only imagine was his mother. His mother mother was never available. His mother died while my our first child was very small and um, and he had no contact basically with her so there was a very difficult relationship with that with his mother and and our child replaced something female in his life that he was lacking so my child our child had no choice whatsoever she had no choice whatsoever she had to be with this man and, and I also had no choice but basically, I understood that the, the things happened because of generational ancestral problems and issues and trauma that had happened before. And the child was only the one that was showing that there was something not quite right in my family, and but also in her father's family, which I can't touch, of course, um, out of respect. Of course, I would never. Um, so if you do constellation, you don't. You don't constellate um, for your partner. You can constellate in order to get um, to heal a better parent, so in order to help your child. But um, you would never do that out of respect. Um, look into the issues of another person, which of course would be great. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, if you do that, you will see that <coughs> in the constellation there will be, um, it, it will not work because you're working out of egoistic um, uh, reasons, but not in order to, to change yourself. So basically I learned you can't change anybody else. You can only change yourself and you can only change your own attitude to life and how things are and how you want to be in the world. Yeah, so basically, uh, through constellations, I, I started to understand um, how, how things were and, and that I had to actually say yes to them and, that, and to surrender to what was and what is. And fortunately, and I think because of this work, I kept in touch in my heart with my daughter very much, and also with my second daughter, um, ta taught my second daughter to stay in touch because she, I didn't say that, um, I had a second child three years after I had my first child. And of course, my, my, my second child had to suffer the loss mm -hmm. as well, even worse than me, because she was very small. She didn't understand any of it. She was only two years old. And, <coughs> uh, and, and all of a sudden, her sister was gone. And after two years in um, seeing her only every other weekend, she was completely off the scene, and she didn't see her for seven years. Uh, so through this work, I was able to have a different view to let go of my anger because that definitely did not serve anyone. It didn't serve me and it didn't serve my, ch my child or my other child. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it also wouldn't help um, developing and growing from this. So I let go of that and, and started to explain to my child <laughs> with little constellations on the kitchen table with jam, jam jars and, mm -hmm. and salt and pepper, I would, would say, so um, when she was saying, mom, why can I not see my, my sister? And I'm so angry with her, she should be here. I would say, well, put the jam jar um, as, as Lisa's father, put, put the salt pot or whatever, choose something to represent um, your sister and yourself. And, 
and then we have a look at this and then we maybe see why and she did actually she was perfectly capable of doing that it's a very very simple child um, uh, child friendly way of working and understanding things and she would completely know she was nine or ten years old when she did that on the kitchen table she would say yeah she cannot come she cannot come she has to be with her dad okay but she does love me yes she does love me she saw all that she felt all that and uh, and that way she was able to keep her heart connection going with her sister that she hardly knew yes Oh, oh, absolutely. I was just thinking, yes, <laughs> okay. I should, should do that. Yes, so please do. Yes, please do ask questions. I can't go into the matter too fully. And, um, you know, of course, I, I yes. <laughs> <laughs> How much does it cost? And <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay, you can work in group sessions or one-to-one. -one, mm. And both cost 75 quid if you are an issue holder, which means if you want to sort something out, if you want to have a deeper look into something, 75 pounds mm -hmm. to work with me. An hour. And, uh, no, uh, it's actually two to three hours in a one-to-one -one one session yeah. where we work, work with representatives in the form of um, pieces, of <laughs> <laughs> pieces of paper or figurines, and you can yeah. step into these, these positions yourself. Sorry, you were both. somebody out of this audience to represent my mother, I would probably go for you. I don't know why. I don't I can't yeah, explain I that. <laughs> no, no, because there's something in you that I see that I also see in my mother. So it is a bit random, but it, and, and anybody can do it. And if there's not enough people, and if there's only male available, they can stand in as well. So it's you who chose? Uh, usually the issue holder chooses. And you tell them where to look and how to behave and they, they, they do directions. that themselves they yeah. place each other mm -hmm. in the room and they feel into their their mm -hmm. role although they're not playing anything but mm -hmm. they are in a different role mm -hmm. and they feel their way into it and, and move around and feel where they feel better and then a picture occurs and then you see the dynamic in that family in, in the first picture and that's what the facilitator can work with mm -hmm. How many sessions does it take? It takes one session. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the first session with me, for yeah. me was the one with my mother, and that <laughs> took it took a year or mm -hmm. yeah, probably a year to do another one. Yeah. And I've done a few since. I've probably done five or six since. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take huge amount, and, it, and there's always a big breakthrough in my experience. Mm -hmm. Big mm -hmm. insight. Mm -hmm. Did you ever try conventional therapy? Yeah, I did talking therapy when I was with this bully man, <laughs> um, which helped me greatly, and I would never condemn any other forms of therapy. They're all helpful, and I've done everything, yes, but this was the one that really, which made me see and understand what was going on, what the underlying dynamics were that was holding me back. And it's like that. Really did something that was yeah. awfully wouldn't do. Wouldn't no, I would, I, I would, I would say, you know, I'm, I miss my mother. Well, you know, you talk about it, but it's mm -hmm. brain work, so mm -hmm. um, you can't really sort these things out with your brain. We, we're too small. We can't understand what the bigger picture is, and we, we can have a glimpse into it. That's all we can do. Mm -hmm. Do you know which things are to dealt with now? Yes. Oh, thank you. That's the thing. I never had time enough. So, so the situation is: uh, when she was fourteen, she reconnected. I reconnected with her. Of course, I did that first call. I, I, I moved to England. That was the reconnection point. And she was excited about having her mother that moved to England, especially because she knew part of the family of my husband. And uh, so, um, yeah, she was. Um, she was delighted about that, and, and when she was nearly 15, I, I, I went and visited her. Her father was not happy, um, but, uh, but she wanted it so much. She was a teenager. She was starting to understand that she has a will and she has some power, and we reconnected then, since then, and we're still bonding. 
So I mean, we have a we have a good relationship. It's not very warm. It's not very close. It's not like with my other child, which is very close and easy. Um, but but there's a big <coughs> sense of respect, and and I can feel her love and the way she shows it. And your three sisters? They're very close and they're very sweet with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Each time you went for a session, did you feel a certain readiness before you went? Did you did you almost foresee what might happen? I could not foresee what would happen. I went with, into this without knowing anything about it. Um, when I heard what the facilitator had to say and the stories, the story behind all this work, I I then sensed it very clearly. So maybe maybe one of you or some of you will already now sense. Oh, there's something I could have a look at. It usually happens when we step into the world. This is where to start, really. <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to make one. <laughs> that will become clear, of course, when, when the session happens. Uh, you, you, you feel where the house is burning. Does that answer your question? It does, actually, in some ways. But I have one more which goes into the energetic level because I've heard about this work um, before, but I've never done it myself. Um, but I've also worked for quite a few numbers of years with someone with autodynamic psychopathy. And I find it interesting, the question interesting because I feel like I might be ready now to do this other thing and it might really be mm. a breakthrough because I got lost often to the point where I was so frustrated with that therapy mm. thing. I just thought I pay fifty quid for that thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going round in circles, yeah. and I'm not putting it to the side. I think I needed to do in certain years, and they gave me a lot in some ways. I think in many ways, probably. But my question to you is this intuitive thing because I've heard from a friend of mine in Germany she did this, and he said it's amazing. These representatives I choose, I don't direct them at all. I state the issue, and and they, as you said, they feel into the situation, and they seem to tap into something which is completely um, subconscious Mm -hmm. and kind of like a shared subconsciousness or something Mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Um, Yeah. So I I was just curious to hear if the people you've worked with so far had done some therapeutic work before, usually until they came to you, or is it just sometimes they come literally out of the blue because someone said this is amazing Mm -hmm. and. It's from all walks of life. Usually people uh, hear something from somebody like you did and, and they become interested and, and they, they hear how amazing the work is and then they might be ready to step into something that is a bit deeper than any other therapy I know. Um, so, yeah, um, from all walks of life. You can have had <coughs> talking therapy for ages and, and not pinpointed the root of your issue. Um, because simply it's not in your conscience mm-hmm. and, and with this work we do step very very deep but I'm available all day for yes. a <laughs> <laughs> question <laughs> please ask me mm-hmm. so the other speakers yeah. have a chance to ask I have a phone in my coat pocket and I don't have the time <laughs> 20 oh. past yeah, oh, 20, 20 past oh 20, 20 past, perfect thank yes. you so you're welcome <laughs> um, do people need to stretch before our next